What happens at Grandma's stays at Grandma's is a model for you and your grandkids. If it's fun, it's fair game. But lately, hip pain has you grimacing more than laughing. And that's a moment you realize life's too short to put off treatment any longer. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for orthopedic care with hundreds of joint replacements each year. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better. The Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 744, Common Mistakes When Trying to Lose Weight with Josh Garrett. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I'm Amanda Valentine. Bring a new guest to the podcast, Josh Garrett. Oh, hey. How are you? Good. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. <laughs> That's sarcasm. This is probably, I didn't count, maybe around, what, 60? Episode 60? 60, somewhere, somewhere the, around there. Yeah, it's probably you know? close to 60. So, Josh, give me your background for anybody that's new to this podcast and they're like, oh, well, Josh has been around for people that's been listening a while, but I don't know who the hell Josh Garrett is. Uh, So I started training in 2009 at a big box gym and then opened up uh, my own place in 2013? No. 20... Look at me. (laughs) This is your life, man. (laughs) I didn't. I didn't know I was given the bio today. Uh, when did, 2015? Yeah, and then we moved. Yeah, I don't know. I've been training for a while. <laughs> it's like ten years. So Josh owns Cincy 360 yeah. Fitness. That's the name. I don't of know the- when I opened it, but <laughs> that's right? the name of the gym. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to adjust the levels and almost fell. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. All right, it's a great start. I don't know what I'm doing with life. You're about to fall over. <laughs> See where this goes. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is a topic that you suggested for today, which I'm excited. I know you have your little list over there. Yeah. And kind of seeing how our, our lists differ. of uh, Surprisingly common mistakes when trying to lose weight. Um, and I think that, you know, for I have a lot of personal experience to pull from, um, now professional experience being a trainer here at Cincy 360 Fitness, also being just like a health coach and just from people I've talked to over the years and you, I mean, I'm sure that you've gone into cuts and stuff before for your own weight loss, correct? Oh yeah. I've screwed all this up. (laughs) (laughs) I used to tell people to do this stuff. (laughs) So, and I mean, I'm sure that. I mean, how many on average in the course of you owning this gym have people like mostly clients come in and just like, I have weight loss goals. Oh, I mean, that's like what percentage do you think of clients over the years? 80, 85. Okay. I mean, that's kind of what everybody's, that's what everybody thinks that their goal is starting out. And I can explain that a little bit later. Okay. Well, before we get into this, I saw um, a meme on Instagram today because, you know, I like to ask you kind of like out there questions. Oh, no. I didn't notice. (laughs) And I didn't get my book There's out. No book, yeah, exactly. So I'm like, oh, I saw this meme, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is a cool question. I'm gonna change it a little bit from what it originally was, but um, and this is like a deep, li- deep life thought question instead of something completely silly, I guess. But it's like, if you could, like, exit your body and be like a different person for a day, but like get to meet you, like you know, like how do you think that that perception is of like how what's what do you feel like the vibe you would get from yourself? You know what I mean? Let me see the, yeah. exactly how this was worded. But it was just kind of like, oh, well, because you think of how you're right. like operating exactly. in the world. Yeah. And it's but it's like but if you could actually like meet yourself and hang out with yourself for the day, how would you feel about yourself? That would yourself? be an awesome experience. It would be really just cool, wouldn't you it? you be like, oh, now I know how I'm screwing things up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But if you can meet yourself from another person's point of view and experience this as experience your own right. energy. Yeah. Like... Yeah, what would that? How would you think that would be? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to take the generic route. It's just situational. You yeah. Know? In some situations, it would be like, oh man, this guy's serious about this, and then other situations, it'd be like, oh, this guy don't don't care about that. You know, that kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. It's just that, you know, I I think that as we talked about before, like everybody has that spectrum, and there's some things that I'm really passionate about, and I think that that would come across, and then there's other things that I'm like, I don't. 
you know, if we're talking about fitness, I'm super passionate about it. We're talking about spelling. I don't know. <laughs> <do> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know but i'm just saying like not even from that i guess just like an overall vibe if like you were at a party and you're just like hey this is josh garrett like what do you think what your perception of yourself would be like what do you be yeah, like that's such a that's an interesting one yeah I, mean, it would, I don't know i think i have that definite leadership qualities like i i kind of i can own like the room command the room okay. if need be you know um but i can also like read the room as well so if i need to follow i can follow um so there would be like that confidence vibe. There would be that if that guy wanted to do it, he's going to do it. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, and not like cocky, but like just, you know, if I set my mind to something, it's I'm going to try like hell to make it happen. Yeah. Um, I think I give that vibe off. And then, you know, again, it would just be, you know, at a party, it's definitely like, oh, man, that guy's, <laughs> guy's ready to get after it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because I just, you know, I just. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. So I would say my, well, yeah. <laughs> I think that like for me, I was thinking about this um, on my drive to the gym that I'm like, well, Mike, I would hope that just like in general, I hope that I just kind of have like a fun, happy vibe. Again, it's situational, not every day, but I hope like in general, that's what it is. And again, it's situational again, too, if I'm at a party, but I'm feeling like very anxious and feeling like overwhelmed, like, you know, I might kind of like hide off by myself um, I think that that's probably happening less and less in my life um, as I get older. But I feel like in general, I mean, I mean, especially if there's alcohol involved, it's just like this chick's nuts. So I would feel like I would think that I, I would hope that people would meet me and be like, oh, she's just got a ton of energy and she's just fun and wants to include everybody in the conversation. Like, I hope I just like give off. I would hope if I met me, I'd be like, oh, she makes me feel comfortable. Like this chick's fun to talk to. Yeah, I definitely I agree. I like the inclusion part of it. I, you know, I hate when you see somebody that's just like, like not engaging, it's like, oh man, like, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Somebody's missing out here. Like, yeah. you know, you want to go over and like, Hey, who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's your, like you can join the conversation. Story, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, cause I mean, I know for myself just being like a natural introvert, like sometimes it's, you know, I want to be part of the conversation, but there's just like this wall oh, in between yeah. you and the conversation. And it's like, well, if somebody kind of pulls you into it, it's almost like, oh, yeah, no, thank you. Like, nice. I wanted to be a part of this conversation, but I didn't know how to jump in. Well, that's a good point. Like if it's if it's a party where it's people that I know, I would be that leadership quality. Yeah. If it's a party that I'm going to that I don't know anybody, everybody would be like, oh, that guy's scared to death. <laughs> 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 you know, because like you walk in and you're like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with the flow. I don't. Yeah. I don't know who the who, what the vibe is, how it interacts, and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. It's right. an interesting one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That was an interesting question. Mm -hmm. So I guess going into the common mistakes that people do when they're trying to lose weight, I guess we can kind of go back and forth here between our lists. Yeah. Um, what do you have first? Or I guess or no particular order. I'm assuming. Yeah. No. These were just things that I just kind of spitballed off my head, and these are things that we probably talked about before. But I would say that focusing on your your weight or whatever your goal is i think people focus on the goal too much rather than the like, process yeah the goal is just like you want to it's kind of like brainstorming right you just you dream big okay who am i gonna be or who would i like to be six months from now a year from now and then after that process is over forget about that it's what are what am i gonna do to get there like who is the person that that person is yeah and then try to like create habits to be that person as much as you can be and then it's almost like your goal happens as a byproduct of the habits that you're creating on a daily basis yeah. which i mean intellectually it makes sense right like everybody's like duh yeah <laughs> but it's it's really you know we get so caught up on oh it's you know your brain switches and you're like i want this but y your body has been like, yeah, but you've been doing this for the last 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's going to take me a little while to get, come around to what your brain wants. But, you know, when our brain switches, we're like, I've been doing this forever. And it's like, it's been four weeks. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Um, but, but I think keyword there is just habits, though. Yeah. Like, it's just I don't think I think people think, yeah, like you said, focus on the goals and not really d breaking it down to habits because habits aren't as sexy as goals. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge, I mean, that's where you're going to get it is consistently creating new habits. Yeah. 
For sure. What do you got? Well, before I get to that, to zoom okay. out from something you said, this was an exercise I did a few years ago that I really liked. And kind of just think, like you said, just like thinking of like, who's that person I want to be and how I'm going to get there. So if you want to zoom out an even more global thing, um, this exercise I did was, okay, you are 80 years old. Like I could go, I'm, I'm me at my age now, I'm interviewing 80 year old me. And then I'm like, Hey, 80 year old Amanda, like, what did you accomplish? And like, what are your biggest accomplishments? Like, what did you do? And then what does, what does me say? And then from that, I'm like, how did you do that? How did you do these huge life accomplishments that you're like so proud of? Like who are like, you know, what are the things that you're most proud about your life about? And then ask myself how did well, how would you do that? And then you just walk it backwards. And then it's right. like, well, if that's ultimately what I want, like I'm 80 years old and I feel like I've lived a, white, a life well lived and I've achieved all my goals. Well, what are they? There's the answer. And then, yeah, break it down. Well, um, you know. Well, if I wanted this, then, okay, what are the actionable steps that I have to start implementing now so 80-year-old me has them? Yeah. No, I I think that, I mean, those are, those are the things that make it happen. You know, the the people just, they always asphyxiate on, this is what I want, rather than like, this is who I want to be, and and these are the things that that person would have to do to get from point A to point B. You know, it's, it's, uh. Which I mean, easier said than done, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, we we kind of I, I think we're all guilty of of that. But it's like if you can start to identify what those habits are, then yeah, try to make that as much of a ritual as possible. Then the chances of success are a lot higher. Yeah, and then definitely also think knowing your distractions. Oh yeah. Of pinpointing those and then catching yourself in those of like, yeah. oh, I'm feeling like I don't feel like doing this. I'm going to hop on. TikTok or YouTube or whatever to distract myself, like know that that's your go to and be like, okay, here I'm at this crossroads. Do I go on YouTube and go down a hole for an hour or do I go for a walk? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, The the first thing, well, these are in no particular order on my list too, is um, thinking a common mistake that people do when trying to lose weight is I think that just kind of overeating healthy foods. So thinking like, Oh, avocados are healthy. They absolutely are. But if you're like motoring like five of them, like all the time, I mean, that is just an intense amount of calories and fat. Mm -hmm. And that's not bad, but it's just anything of like too much of anything like is can be bad of like you think moderation. So I think when you're thinking of like, oh, trail mix is healthy, but then you eat a whole bag like you that is you're, you're going to be in a calorie surplus instead of a deficit for the day. So, right. I mean, just if you and I know there's way more to it than just yeah, yeah. calories in, calories out sort of thing. But ultimately, that is this, the science is, you know, that you need less calories than you're burning or, you know, to burn more calories yeah. than you are consuming. And so it's yeah, I think it's like avocados, guacamole, trail mix. Or just even anything of like, oh, well, this is a healthier pasta or butter or whatever those nuts, things are. Nuts, nuts are, are really hard. Yeah. And then you just, ju- you just oh, I go over a bag of almonds. It's like, oh, man. That's, yeah. That's a good amount of calories you just consume there. Yeah. So it's like, it's not one of those things where it's like you shouldn't have those things. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, well, to be mindful of those portion sizes of those healthier foods. Just mm-hmm. because it's healthy doesn't mean that those calories don't count as much as eating, you know, something deep fried. Yep. And now I'll go the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, my number two is eating too few calories. Ah, I had that <laughs> on my list too. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's a thing, you know, I mean, it's, you know, the magic number is at 1200 calories and I don't know when that became the magic number, you know, the, the advertising, yeah, and it's so awful. That's yeah. like toddler calories. Yeah, it's it's just it's really um, astronomical how many people just eat too few of calories trying to achieve whatever goal that they're trying to achieve. Um, but I mean, I, I get it. I understand the idea behind it, right? Because intellectually, we're like, well, if I'm eating too much, then I'm going to gain weight, and that's true. But if you're eating too less, then your body's going to be stressed and your body's going to hold on to everything that it can to try to survive. So it's going to start burning muscle rather than burning fat. And then you you may end up losing weight, but it's not the look that you're going for. And then you're like, well, this isn't what I want. So I need to eat less. And then I need to, you know. It's yeah. Just, well, it starts to cycle. And it's, it's mm-hmm. 
Uh, I just did a podcast um, with Sarah with Team Fit with me about this, about like reverse dieting and eating more to yeah. lose weight. Because once you, I mean, yeah, if you're going from a calorie surplus for a long amount of time to a calorie deficit, like you're going to see those things motoring mm -hmm. and you're going to see that the weight fall off and they're going to see things change and it gets exciting. And then you're going to hit the dreaded plateau. And so when you hit the plateau, you're like, well, the answer is to just mm -hmm. eat less. And then the next plateau, yes. well, I'll eat less. And the next plateau, we'll eat. Well, OK, so I, the, the scale's not budging. So I'm going to not only eat less, but I'm going to do another hour on the treadmill. So the, the activity goes up and the calories go down. And then it's like there's no place to go then. Like yeah. you are, your metabolism is just fried. Yep. Because, and then you're just like, the only answer to you is just like less and less and less or more and more exercise until that's when you're going to have to reverse diet out of that, which I've done before too, which is just a hard mental game mm -hmm. because then you're just, because it's, especially if you're in that level, you're eating such few calories when you do eat something, even if it's your normal maintenance level of calories, your body will be like five pounds yep. and then hold on to them. And you're like, what the hell? I had a smoothie bowl yep. and I gained five pounds. It doesn't make sense. Well, if I'm going to eat something healthy and gain weight, I might as well just go eat whatever I want. I'm going exactly. to have a bucket full of butter. Yep. Yep. So then it's like, then you have to slowly, if you get in that you know calorie deficit range for so long, then you have to slowly incrementally bring them up without trying to get that scale to move so your brain doesn't go nuts mm -hmm. till you get back to a maintenance level so where you are eating more food so then you have the manipulation you know window to be like okay well I want to gain muscle so I'm going to eat a little bit more or I want to lose weight I can back it down a little bit more and then you're backing it down to 1800 2000 2200 calories not 900 right. calories and you exactly. can eat like a, an adult yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um I do want to say that, you know, if, if anybody's listening to this and wants to hear more about the eating more and reverse dieting to go check out that episode um, just a few episodes back with Sarah um, from Team Fit with me. And she is also accepting new clients if you need a health coach to kind of walk you through a reverse diet or just to have a better understanding of your calories and macros and, you know, have a different relationship with food. She's awesome. Um, and you, right now you can save 10% off month one of all plans and packages. If you go to teamfitwithme.com slash pound this, and that link is in the show notes. And that brings me back to my list yep. of common mistakes is thinking of, or I guess not thinking of, or, or, okay, let me think how I want to word this of thinking the only activity that's important is the activity spent in the gym. There's an activity mm -hmm. called NEAT, which NEAT is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is, you know, just walking mm -hmm. and cleaning your house and raking and chores, like how much you're just active. And I think those things add up a ton. It goes back to those daily habit sorts of things, not saying the gym is not incredibly important, but it's one of those things of like, oh, I don't have a half hour to go to the gym today. Oh, I might as well just watch TV. Like, no, well, those that step count matters. Like just moving of, you know, the cliche park further back in the parking yeah. lot, take the stairs, like all of those things matter. And if you're doing those smaller things every day, all day, I mean, that's going to add up to something that's going to make a, a, a way bigger difference than if you just like went to the gym twice a week when you're putting it into your daily routine. And I think People miss the mark on that a lot of just thinking my exercise is only when I'm going yeah. to, do, you know, a fitness class or only when I'm going to the gym or if I am going to go out, I have to go for a run. Like walks don't count of yeah. like moving counts. Yeah. And just like that, it has to be structured. You know? Yeah. It, it's like, no, like you can if you would add more activity into your daily life, you're going to see way more benefit than I would say coming to the gym five times a week. I mean, in all honesty, if you get to the gym two, three times a week and add in more activity in your daily life, I think that's more beneficial than coming into a gym five times a week and thinking that you have to just crush it every time you come in here. Yeah. You know, because that brings me to my next one. Okay. <laughs> Exercising too much. You know? uh, yeah. There's just so many, you know, and, and all of this stuff is you can either exercise too much or you can exercise too little. You know, it's not like everybody does this, but it it happens a lot is, you know, seven days a week of going into the gym for an hour or, or five days a week going into the gym for an hour. It's exercise is a stress on the body. And if you're stressing the body too much, the body's not going to give you the results that you're trying to achieve. It's not going to be healthy because it's overstressed. Yeah. And or stress is anything, you know, it's not just stress in the gym. It's 
stress from work, stress from life, stress from families, you know, lack of sleep, eating poorly, all of that stuff stresses the system. And if the system's overstressed, then it's not going to give you the results that you're you're trying to achieve. Yeah. And I'll say from being on that spectrum as well, I feel like I've been all over the place on all of these. I mean, when you met me that I was at that place, I mean, I was going, oh, yeah. To, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, and then you didn't even know me when I was going to the first gym I went to in Cincinnati, which was more circuit class, circuit style, like, yeah. like almost like orange theory sort of classes. And I was doing those five days a week, right? Yeah. Five or six days a week. Even like if I had, like I was on the air on a Saturday cause I did one Saturday a month. Like I would still go to the class and just leave early so I could go be like, it's like, I wouldn't even miss it, even though I would have to like bail out early. I'm like, I still got to go. And then if I didn't, it would get to the point where what I was using it for stress relief. Like I was using it as a crutch in a different way where before used, you know, Hey, I'm stressed out. I'm emotional, whatever. I need that dopamine hit before I would overeat and binge eat to kind of fulfill that need. And then it kind of changed over to exercise because again, your mind is like, well, it's healthy. Yeah, this is the healthier choice. Like so, but then th- that can also be harmful too if you peg it in the other way. Yeah, and then after doing that, I was doing you know bro splits at the gym, which I do really enjoy. But I was going lifting five to six days a week. In the days that I wasn't lifting, I was walking ten to fifteen miles a day. Or uh, at the time I was doing that, though I wasn't running anymore. But when I was going to those other gym classes, I was still running and walking a ton. Yeah, and it was it was just a lot and well, then when I stopped I felt insane mm-hmm. and that feeling is terrible yes, yes it is. <laughs> and it, it goes into the same as like when you start under eating you know you start going to the gym five six days a week and your body starts responding positively and you're like oh yeah I like this you know and then it starts to plateau and you're like uh I need more yeah I need to hammer down you know and what I'm not doing enough and then you start going harder and harder and then you just burn yourself out. And yeah. You're not going to lose weight that way. It's the reverse dieting. And it's like, okay, well, now you've taken something that you've loved and you you manipulated it too much. So now you got to you gotta pull the reins back on that. And yeah. That's a very, very hard thing to do. It is. And I mean, even I was at a point, and this was a nice lesson learned, where, again, f- afraid I was going to gain weight and then trying to over-exercise that. So just worried about not losing as much as like losing my progress that I was going, it was a Saturday and, um, I was going to a pig roast that afternoon where I knew I was going to like just eat everything and drink my face off. Like we were going to the lake where I was going to drink and we're going to eat all day. And so I'm like, okay, well I'm going to do that. So I did back to back workouts at the gym, like two hours, like two hard workouts. Like I did one that was like more weight training and then I did like a full cardio workout and at the end of that, like, I've, I, and like, I felt okay after the, the, those back, to, like, two hours of really yeah. intense workouts. Yeah. But by the time I did get to the pig roast and I'm eating and I'm drinking, like, I felt uh-huh. horrible. You get the, <laughs> yeah. Feeling. And yeah. it was like, oh, like, I tried to do this so I could not feel guilty all day and yeah. not worry and not think about gaining weight. And it was like the opposite where I'm like, oh, now I feel like nauseous Mm -hmm. and I feel like crap. And I ruined this experience because I just beat the hell out of my body because I was punishing myself for eating food. Oh, yeah. I can remember leg days where like I would puke twice during a leg day. And then it was just like, you know, that was that's how you made progress. And I was driving a manual car at the time. And I was like, I can't even I can't even drive home. (laughs) Like This is ridiculous, (laughs) you know, but that's. 20, 21 year old self. That's how it's, that's how you got to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I can't say I've ever puked from a workout, so I'm pretty hyped about that. Oh, <laughs> brutal. Um, on my list, I guess like, cause I, you've already said some of the things I said. Um, and I think it goes into exactly what we were saying, uh, just a mistake when it comes to weight loss. And I've talked about this a bunch and I'm, and I'm so guilty of this, um, now still like it's hard to undo is just that, all or nothing. Mm-hmm. Like I, I am, I like to live in the extremes. I like to peg it. Yep. And so then it's, it's hard to, of like, Oh, especially when you're just like, Oh, I've been quote unquote good all week. Like, Oh, I've stuck to whatever I did my thing all week. And then be like, 
okay, well now it's the weekend and we going ham, like yeah. and we're going to the buffet and messing it up. You know what I mean? So then it's just kind of like, well, that's going to kind of undo all of your progress because you probably underate and just like ate like a bird for most of the week. And then you just like ate all of the food on the weekend. Like yeah. you're not going to move anywhere. You're just going to be like Maybe. stuck where you're yeah. at. And it's and that's just jacking your metabolism up too. So I think that's so hard to be like, you know, I'm trying to lose weight, so everything has to be clean and perfect, and it needs to be like if I have if I have pizza at lunch, or if I go out with coworkers and we have, you know, chicken wings, and I pour blue cheese all over it, or I just like eat all the fried foods or whatever. Of like, then it's like, oh well, I already ruined that, so I'm gonna ditch the healthy eating the rest of the day. Yep. Then it goes into, well, now what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, like those things are fine. You can do those things. And you're probably going to find yourself doing that less and less when you give yourself the permission to do yeah. it. And so I think that just like myself included, jacks so many people up because you're just in your head of like, if I'm not doing this perfectly, then yeah. throw it out. Well, and I mean that this is this is more yours than mine, but I've heard you say it many a times, like, don't think of it as a diet like everybody's. You know, I'm going on a diet on Monday. Yeah. And it's like, that's so, it just messes with your head of like, well, I can have this, but I can't have that, you know? And, yeah. And, and, and at some point you're coming off of that quote unquote diet. So, yeah. you know, what are you going to do once you're off of the diet? You know, and, and you can speak to this way more than I do. Um, so I kind of stole yours. <laughs> I think, <laughs> that's all right. But yeah, it's, I mean, that's where it's like, I think that when we label fo foods good and bad, that we get into dangerous waters. Mm -hmm. Are there th foods that are more nutritionally dense and better fuel for your body? Yep. Absolutely. I mean, you go into a grocery store, like 80, 90% of it's all just like made in a lab. Yep. Like it's manufactured food, which is, you think, is that the best fuel for your body? Is that how we were designed as animals to eat? Right. No, it's not saying don't have those. Right. Like I definitely ate an entire box of Cheez-Its like between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. I ate a whole box of crumble cookies because yep. they were supposed to go to my mom for her birthday. Like it's just like I had those things and it wasn't I've just gotten to the point where I'm like I wanted to do it and I did it. I'm not labeling it as bad, yep. but we move on after we do it. But if I told myself I can't have these things, that's the moment I go just bonkers. Yep. And so it's yeah, like, yeah, there's things that are you know, better or yep. uh, for you, but to be like, you're not allowed to eat that ever again, unless you have an allergy or you have an autoimmune disorder and things like don't jive with your body as right. well. That's obviously different, but to be like, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight so I can't eat fast food anymore. Like mm -hmm. that doesn't says, says who, yeah. like you, as long as you can manage your relationship with that and make it work for you, then yeah, I think that and it's so hard because I lived in that headspace for an extremely long time. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, I think we're all guilty of this at some point. You know, yeah. I think that that's one of the main things is like, don't beat yourself up about it if you are going through it. You know, it's like you identify it. Like, and that w was mine. The, one of these is like not being real with yourself. You know, I think so many people are like, oh, I eat healthy. And then oh, yeah, when you yeah. start like tracking it, it's like, this is, you, you would agree that this is healthy and it's like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, just, just be real with yourself in the mirror. And like, if you're struggling with something like that's, it's fine. We, we all struggle with something, but I think that when you struggle with something and you don't admit that you're struggling with something, that's the, the time that you start getting in trouble with it, you know? Yeah. And that's a hard place to get into. You know, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying like that you should be able to identify that right off the rip. You know, you yeah. got you to kind of see how the pattern starts to develop. But then you also have to be willing to to look at that. Mirror well, and you got to say, you know, yeah, whether it's, it's the right thing for you or not. Is it helping you or hurting you in trying to achieve your goals? Yeah. And that's where it's like when you're at least talking to clients here at the gym or I'm like, what's your hydration look like? Oh, I drink a ton of water. Yep. Described to me a ton of water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What's that announces? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's like what they're doing is not bad. But if you're identifying it as, as I'm drinking a ton of water and you're drinking like eight ounces of water a day, I'm like, I'm glad you're getting some. But I would not identify that as a ton of water. Right. Like, let's talk about, you know, how the how different hydration makes you feel just to stick to water. And it's and those sorts of things. And I think that even getting outside of the food and the exercise realm, 
And again, like this is again, my story and my perspective of this. So not putting this on anybody else, but for a really long time, like I would have identified myself of like, Oh, like I think part of me, like definitely part of me knew that I was very unhappy in my body. Yeah. And it was hard for me to, and it still is like body dysmorphia stuff is very real. It's like hard for me to like identify what I look like in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that's even kind of more messed up for me now, changing my body size than before. But for a long period of time, I'm like, I know that I'm, I'm not a, a size I would like to be. I'm not unhappy with my body. I am unhealthy for a lot of reasons, but I'm like, but you know, kind of look like everybody else. I'm pretty, pretty average, you know? And like, then I would think, tell my, my head of like, well, what I, I'm not, it's not, it's not that bad. And then I couldn't fit into a booth at a restaurant. Yeah. And I'm like, those are the hard things or that I think people feel that all the time until like you can't put on a seatbelt on a plane or you yeah. can't get on a roller coaster and those things. And again, I don't feel like those things are to fat shame you or to like ruin your life. But I think that's one of those things of like, I think in my head for a long time of like, Oh, I'm, I'm in an average sized body. Yeah. And then I'm like, I can't fit into a normal size, not like some baby gap booth. Like that's like yeah. only meant for tiny people. I'm like, <sighs> And and a good example of that, too, of speaking of the booth is um, when I used to work at Subway, where I've worked at multiple Subways in my life. Again, like just thinking of like, you know, know, I don't feel like that big. And then I saw my reflection in the mirror as I was sitting down at a booth to like eat my, my I was on break to eat my sandwich. And I could see my reflection in the mirror or in the window. And I'm like, that's not me. And then I'm like looking at it and I, I was moving around looking at it. I'm like, oh, is that what I look like? Left like my like belly is hanging on top of the table. Like I'm like, oh. it's like, but I've written this story in my head of like, oh, it's not that bad. Right. Um, and again, it's different for everybody. Mm-hmm. So this is my experience. So it's, it's one of those things where I think that that was a danger zone of like, oh, it's fine. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm not happy. I don't feel good. I have zero energy, like all of the other things. Mm -hmm. And then just being like, is it really? Mm -hmm. Or is that just what I've been telling myself so I don't have to do anything about it? Right. And I mean, that's all subjective, you know, for sure. Like you got to decide what that is for you. You know, nobody's going to, when you're looking in the mirror, you're the only one that's going to tell yourself whether it's, it's okay with you or not. Yeah. And yeah, it's, that's an interesting one. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I don't know. Have you ever dealt with that? Like any sort of like body dysmorphia? Oh God, yeah. Yeah. In, in like what ways? Just, you know, I mean, I've always been in relatively okay shape mm-hmm. uh, in, in the masses, but yeah, when I take my shirt off, it's like, Oh, I don't like that. And then love handles. Oh, why do I hold body fat right there? I just can't get that part, you know? Yeah. But like I put my shirt on, I'm like, all right, I like this. It is all right, you know. But yeah, I mean, I think that everybody has some thing that they struggle with. And, you know, whether you're just starting your journey or you're years into your journey, you're always going to have something that you're that you're just not quite happy with, you know. And and that I think is the part of the process. You know, you're you're chasing this illusion of what perfection is. And everybody has this different idea of what perfection is in their head. You're never going to get there. Yeah. You're always going to be wanting to get better. And, and, you know, and then sometimes you just put it on cruise control and and that's fine as well. It's just, I think everybody struggles with that, though. I don't think it's just. Oh, no. You know. Or they definitely do. And I I would say that just another level, kind of what I was speaking to, which I have done a podcast episode on this. If you, uh, if anybody wants to listen to it, just search wherever you listen to your podcast and whatever app Just search pound this and like a body dysmorphia. And I talked to Dr. Ashley Solomon about body dysmorphia. Like there's just things like even now, like I'm literally a decade into my health and wellness journey yeah. now. And I'll be like, I come up to like a turnstile or something like I'm not going to fit or like being on an airplane and be like, I don't know how I'm, I'm not going to be able to fit in between the seats. It's just like I, it's like or some days, like even though I, I understand my body looks and feels different, but some days my brain is just like. I'm like, I just, my feeling is just, it felt like I didn't change anything. Like anybody else outside of me, like, what are you talking about? But in my head, I'm like, I 
feel exactly the same as I did. And it, that's how I like view myself in the world. So then people will be like, oh, no, you, you know, you like I've had people tell me before in the past of like, oh, no, I would define you as athletic. I'm like, what? <laughs> I would not define myself as athletic. Like, what are you talking about? And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what? (laughs) That's what I was just going to say. I go on the other end of the spectrum where I look at something like athletically and I'm like, oh, I can still do that. And I'm like, oh, you're not 21 anymore. (laughs) No, you you can't get that box jump like you used to. Oh, yeah. See, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not there. That's that's where it's just kind of like, yeah, it's it's. And I think that's, uh, you know, what's so hard of, I guess, thinking about. Um, when you're thinking about weight loss, uh, specifically, and you're tr- you're you're aiming for your body to be different, you're yep. looking to change your body, whether that's because you want to have more mobility in your joints and take away aches and pains, or to have more energy, or because you want to aesthetically look different, whatever that is, you're looking for a change in body, and that to think like you know, I thought forever of like, oh well, what if I ever lose weight, like man, I'm just going to be walking around being like this hot bitch, you know what I mean? And some days you do, but some days it's like, no, sometimes it feels like it's nothing has changed at all, even though it's been 10 years later. And I think that if we go into it with, again, that kind of all or nothing mindset, or you, you think that it's, you write a story in your head of how exactly you're going to feel. And it all looks like that. And it doesn't play out the way that you want it. And you're still struggling with dealing with your body even though your body has changed and it's everything you could have ever dreamed of whenever you started and it's still not good enough and it's that's the thing of like it's never going to just completely solve itself those are like hard conversations with yourself of like you know what am I really looking at here and focusing on good things and trying to stop always focus on what do I have to change like can't you just be happy with like where we're at right now like Today is all we got. Let's be happy today. We want to make implement some changes yep. to change, but like, let's still appreciate what we have right yeah, now. Be accepting of it. And I think that that leads to the last one that I have. And it's like, don't change every variable as drastically as you can quickly. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that just there's... Spin 180. Yeah, there's like so many variables. And, and if you do change everything... It's like taking a handful of darts, throwing them at the dartboard, and then you hit a bullseye, and you're like, I don't know why I hit that bullseye. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you slowly start to change your nutrition, you slowly start to change your sleep habits, you slowly start to change your workout habits, you know, then you can start to gradually see what that response is that your body is getting from whatever stimulus you're throwing at it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're like, oh, I like this. Keep doing that. Or... And that really hasn't changed anything. Okay, let's change it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, and on that, um, I'm going to add something to my list of do a little bit of research and whatever changes you are making. Um, Like that, what you just said reminded me of like so many people do the Whole30 for weight loss. Yeah. Whole30 is meant to be an elimination diet to identify allergies. Like it's not meant for you to lose weight. It's meant to take you kind of down bare bones and then slowly bring back things like dairy and gluten and see how your body reacts to it. Do you get bloated? Do you get headaches? Do you feel more tired when you add these things back after spending so much time without them? That's like, if you read the whole 30 book, like that's what it's meant for. It's not meant for you to drop a bunch of weight. And so like, but if you like look into that rather than be like, well, I'm going to do this or I'm just going to become vegan or whatever the thing is, or that's, you know, the thing of like, I'm going to do this, like, take a minute and actually do some research on keto or intermittent fasting or whatever you want to try and be like, okay, well, what's the the thing that's really making the change here? Not in, in, in understand what keto is doing to your body and how you're using that and maybe why you're losing weight and the, the, you know, what, whatever your goals are, does that match that? And is this like meant for long-term whole 30 is not meant for long-term it's meant for 30 days right <laughs> you know what exactly. i mean yeah. i think any of those things like keto or whatever and that has like a diet name to it it's not meant for long term unless you just really freaking love it which right. is awesome but i think you should go into like if you're making a change in the way that you eat or what you're drinking or how you're moving your body not only what can you enjoy out of it but, but like but really look at it of like what am i doing this for what am i getting out of it and what does doing this from the research, whether that's having a coach or a trainer or Googling or whatever it is, like, what is that meant to do? And I think that that's one of those things too, where it's like, it's a mistake of like, well, I'm going to do keto and I'm going to lose weight. 
Sure, you right. probably will. Right. But mm-hmm. for what period of time is that is that sustainable? Is it are you using as something as a kickstart to something else? Yeah. Like there's just so many things that it's just kind of like, well, I tried this and it worked until it didn't. And you have to like. And now I'm stuck. Yeah. Now I don't know what to do. You know, that kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that, you know, we, there, there's just, it's almost like we have so much information. We have too much information. Yeah. Well, there's so many conflicting points yes. of view. Yes. And that's where it's not one body is the same. So what worked for me may not work for another individual. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's really all a guessing game. I mean, we, we've studied the body a lot, but at the end of the day, it's still every body that walks through the door is different. And we have to identify that and we have to, you know, not square peg, round hole, everything. And, and then we get into these camps and then there's like all this arguing and it's like, and paleo's Whoa. best, yeah, it's keto's like, oh. best, intermittent max. Yeah. I mean, it all has its pro, pros and cons, you know, I yeah. think that, but I think we all can all agree that, you know, we should be eating whole foods. Like, yeah. Well, and I do want to say on the topic of weight loss, um, a cardiologist I spoke to said this. And I think, I mean, this is this is a harsh line here, but I think it's reality of, you know, you're thinking you're doing something just with the intention of lose weight, losing weight, not with health in mind. I'm just trying to lose weight. He said, he's just like, yeah, he's like, you can also get cancer and AIDS and lose a bunch of weight. That doesn't mean you're healthy. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, that's an aggressive statement, but that's true. Not it's from like Amanda Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but yeah, I mean, that's where it's like losing weight doesn't necessarily equate to health. Right. Like you can lose weight by doing some really stupid stuff. Yeah. Like you can just take caffeine pills all day and not eat and yeah. run yourself ragged. You're going to lose weight. Does that mean you're healthy? No. So weight loss doesn't always equal healthy. And I think that message gets lost a ton. Yes. Like, are you doing healthy choices for your body and is weight loss a byproduct of that? Or are you doing harmful things to your body with just only weight loss is the only goal? Because again, like that's why it's like, it's, it's hard. What if you, if you go, I mean, God, what an awkward situation of like, Oh, you've been losing weight. You look great yeah, because I have cancer. Oh my God. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't always equal health. And so I think that as yeah. harsh of a message that is, I think that we need to keep that in mind sometimes. No, I'll get real on here. I actually said that to my aunt when she had cancer. You know, really? I, yeah. I was like, man, you look like you've been losing weight, you know? And she's like, yeah. And then my dad told me the next day that she had cancer. And I was like, oh, oh God. damn. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that, that hit home hard, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's an interesting one. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's. It's aggressive, but it's yeah. true. And that's where, yeah. you know, the, he was specifically speaking to keto, like doing like a dirty kind of keto of like, yeah, you'll lose weight eating hot dogs and bologna all day when you're right. changing that sort of thing up. But does that mean you're healthy? Right. Doesn't always equal healthy. Um, and I think that's where, again, like the goal, if the goal is health, like I just want to be healthier, I want to feel good mentally and physically. I want to be healthy. Usually the choices you're making to be healthy Weight loss is a side effect of those things. 100%. It's not fast. And it's a marathon. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. And that's where it's like, yeah, I've lost 60 pounds in six, in, you know, six months before. It was awesome. Yeah. Like, oh, holy shit. I've never looked this way before. Whoa. And then it came right back. Yeah. And then that's, that's horribly mentally taxing yeah. and horrible yeah. to be there and then try to lose it again. And then I lost again and then gained it back again. Like that. I mean, that sucks. Yeah. So this time, you know, for me losing over 100 pounds, it took me two and a half years total because I'm like, I'm not slow and steady, cranking it hard. And then, look, I'm here, you know, 10 years later from that New Year's resolution and that decision, still like living a healthy lifestyle because I found things that I liked and what I didn't. And I took it slow and I didn't become there is definitely seasons of being coming obsessed with the scale. Like, oh, I, sure. I don't think that you're going to avoid that. Yeah. But like, it's definitely where I would then get to the point where I'm like, that scale is getting in my head too much. We got to take a break yep. from that guy. He's got to go away. That's looking in the mirror and identifying it. You yeah, know, we all have it. It's yeah. just, but yeah, I would definitely that would be my ending message is the marathon, not the sprint. Yeah. You know, so. Well, thanks, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just snatch that from you. What'd you say? <laughs> I said, I'll just snatch that from you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, 
I guess that's it then. Good topic. Thanks, yeah. Josh. And then I guess if anybody is interested in training at the gym and having more of these conversations, especially with me, I love having food conversations. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can email info at cincy360fitness.com or you can always shoot me an email, amanda at amandavalentinebites.com. Anything else? That's a wrap. Peace out. That's it. AmandaValentineBites.com.